just come from the um, oral presentation of um, um, early treatment of breast cancer. And I think the, the three first abstracts were in fact those that were more interesting that we should talk about. And so they, they were, the three of them, they were discussing the adjuvant treatment of HER2 positive breast cancer. And, and the three of them asked dif different questions. So one asked the, the role, what's the role of pertuzumab? So what's the role of double blockade? Uh, one asked the question about the duration of trastuzumab, which is a long and uh, interesting question, never really answered yet because the standard of care is one year of trastuzumab. And the third one was an update of the adjuvant trial ALTO, um, which, which tests the question of the combination of trastuzumab and lepatinib. So the AFFINITY trial uh, randomized uh, 4,800 women with HER2 positive breast cancer, HER2 positive early breast cancer. And in fact, it is a very good uh, patient population because the affinity trial allowed patients with tumors that are f five millimeters diameter, so very small tumors, provided that they were either G3 or hormone receptor negative or uh, very young women, less than 35. So we have a population of very good patients, and then we have the, the usual, more than one centimeter node positive, what have you. And, and in this population, the investigators asked the question of one year of trastuzumab versus one year of the combination, so the double blockade, trastuzumab, pertuzumab. And they were quite um, liberal as to what chemotherapy was allowed. So it's, it's really a question of some chemo versus the double blockade and the single blockade. The trial is a positive trial for, for the primary endpoint. So um, there is a difference in 2% on disease-free survival. So the hazard ratio is 0.81% and the P is statistically significant. Um, the overall survival date is not mature enough, so now at the moment there's 1% of overall survival, but that's not statistically significant. Affinity really wanted to go into subgroups and, and had pre-planned subgroup analysis. And so Affinity was looking at if patients that are hormone receptor negative and if patients that are node positive really derive more benefit from the addition of pertuzumab. And in fact, the, the benefit is larger in hormone receptor negative patients, the, the magnitude of benefit is 1.6 percent, so the number needed to treat a patient to avoid one event is less, is around 60, and also in, in node positive patients the trial is also a bit more positive and the number needed to treat of patients to avoid one event is also less than in the whole population. Then affinity was very, it was very important to check for safety data because cardiac toxicity is a very important uh, it's a paramount, it's an important fact of trastuzumab. And so Affinity did not see an increase in cardiac toxicity uh, with the double blockade. It did see an increase in diarrhea and a, a slight increase in hematological toxicity. And that was expected, especially the diarrhea. The final message of Affinity, it's, it's really very important that we have a position, right? Because tomorrow we're in the clinic. I do not think that I am going to routinely prescribe double blockade as of now to my patients with HER2 positive adjuvant breast cancer. Um, there are situations, there are syst health systems in which patients with more aggressive disease, namely hormone receptor negative with lots of positive nodes, those that have the highest magnitude of relapse, they will derive the highest magnitude of an intervention. And so I think that um, also a very important take home message is that it's very difficult to have very positive trials over one year of, of trastuzumab. One year of trastuzumab was amazing, right? It's 12% DFS, nearly 10% overall survival. So it's very difficult to increment on this. So it's very difficult to have very positive trials after this. Shortly after the, um, the HERA trial and the Alliance, the NCCTC trials, the American trial reported, the, the Finnish uh, did a, a trial in which they gave all patients uh, nine weeks of trastuzumab. It was not a randomized trial, it was not with or without, uh, but they saw very good outcomes in the HER2 positive adjuvant population of this trial. 
And so everybody, uh, sometimes we do this in the clinic, although it was not a randomized question, sometimes when we have old, frail patients with very small tumors, we give them nine weeks of trastuzumab. And the Italian cooperative group is, is really should be, uh, should be congratulated for asking exactly that question. So they asked the question of trastuzumab duration in a randomized trial. And so they asked one year of trastuzumab, which was what was licensed after Hera, Hera versus nine weeks of trastuzumab. They did uh, ask this with, with two arms, which are quite different. So, so they put um, anthracyclines and taxanes, and they put the one year, um, three weekly trastuzumab with the taxanes. And the investigational arm, they put uh, the taxanes, and they gave weekly trastuzumab during the taxanes, and then they gave anthracyclines. So the trastuzumab is before the anthracyclines. And so the, the, the duration of trastuzumab and the amount of trastuzumab given to the patients is very different, but also the amount of chemotherapy given to the patients is, is quite different. And so this might influence the results. The, the, this, this trial was powered for a non-inferiority question, so it wanted to know if nine weeks of trastuzumab was enough, was as good as, and in fact it is not. So the trial is a negative trial. So it, um, it, the, the hazard ratio um, is, is not um, the hazard ratio that should be for non-inferiority. And so we do, we do not have that, that capacity um, statistically to tomorrow to give nine weeks of trastuzumab. But I do think that maybe we can have that capacity clinically. So this trial has um, 1,250 patients. Uh, the overall survival and disease survival in both groups is very good. And, um, and the toxicity is, of course, much less. But we do not know if the toxicity is much less because the dose of trastuzumab is much less and the dose of chemotherapy is also less. But um, in, in this case, I do think that now we have a ra randomized data to propose to our patients and to our commissions and to our hospitals and to our national guidelines in some cases of old frail patients with cardiac problems or with very small tumors, with tumors that are less than one centimeter, I think that we have this possibility. And, and namely with uh, hormone receptor positive disease, where we are going to give a very active therapy, which is endocrine therapy. Alto was presented here in ASCO in 2014. The, the first analysis of ALTO. ALTO um, randomized uh, 8,000 patients um, for, for the questions of uh, trastuzumab and lapatinib. So it asked the question of one year of trastuzumab, the standard, one year of lapatinib, the combination or the sequential um, lapatinib trastuzumab. The arm of lapatinib alone was closed for futility, so it was not, uh, it was not efficacious, there was no efficacy there or there was not no enough efficacy. And so in 2014, the, the presentation was on the combination versus the, the standard, which is trastuzumab. And the trial was negative, so for its primary endpoint, which was disease-free survival. ALTO now, uh, today, this is uh, the pre-specified protocol analysis at five years. So, um, and ALTO now remains a negative trial, although <laughs> ALTO today um, presented to us that in hormone receptor negative patients, the combination is um, positive and is better than trastuzumab alone. I think, um, and this is my opinion, that um, hormone receptor positive disease fares much better because we give them endocrine therapy. And, uh, and we, maybe we really don't need to do the double blockade. I'm sure if hormone receptor negative disease really needs lapatinib, uh, really needs the combination, uh, but the data is there for this. So there is statistical scientific proof of this. In the clinic, I don't know how we integrate this tomorrow because lapatinib is more toxic. So um, lapatinib um, might risk uh, some discontinuation and um, it is a more toxic drug. There is diarrhea um, and, um, and much more toxicity than trastuzumab. Trastuzumab and ALTO continues not to show alarming cardiac toxicity and the addition of lapatinib does not increase cardiac toxicity. I 
I'm more convinced that the, the way to go forward is more with double blockade than with lapatinib. But I really need to understand who are the patients that will really benefit from double blockade because and in the end of the day, double blockade is extremely financially toxic, if not also a bit toxic for our patients. But we need to understand the biological determinants and, and who are the patients that will really benefit from double blockade. Mm -hmm.